and welcome back. In this tutorial, we're going to continue to take a look how we could protect our user's information. Currently in our application, we have our user's collection type where we have two users, other user and test user. Currently the way our application is implemented, if I make an authenticated request to API users, we're actually getting both users. And what I wanna do is I wanna limit our application only to get the data for the sign-in user. So as a sign-in user, I should only be able to get my own data, which is not the case. Another issue here, same thing, if we wanted to find one user, notice how I'm able to get the user for test user, and then I'm also able to get the other user. And again, we wanna prevent this behavior where I'm only able to get my own information. For instance, as a test user, I should not be able to see the other user's data, only be able to see my own data. And furthermore, because of this, we wanna make sure that we are only able to update our own information. For instance, for our test user, let's say I just update the first name to have an empty string, I'm able to do that. So as you could see, for our first name, I just updated the user's first name. But I'm also able to do the same thing for the other user. If I click send, you will see that I just updated the other user's first name, even though I'm logged in as a test user. So in this video, let's take a look how we could limit this to only authorize the user to change their own information. As always, you're going to see the complimentary blog post that has the relative code snippets that we need. So let's jump right into it. So in the backend folder, which is our Strapi project, let's use yarn Strapi generate to create a new middleware. We're going to select middleware. We're going to call it user find many. We're going to click enter. And we're going to create it in the root of our project. Now open your project in VS Code and you will find the boilerplate inside our middlewares folder in a file called user-find-many. We have our console lock here, but if we make a request to get all users endpoint, in our terminal, we don't see the console lock. That's because we have to inject this middleware into our user's permission plugin. So let's see how to do that now. Inside of our backend folder, in our Strapi application, you will find an index.js file. It's going to contain a register function and a bootstrap function. We're going to inject our middleware using the register function. When our application rebuilds, our register function is one of the functions that runs. So this is a great place to programmatically inject our middlewares into our routes or different plugins. The first thing we're going to do is get all of our user routes. We're going to use strapi.plugins, search on the user's permission plugin, searching the routes, looking for the content API, and return those routes. If you're wondering where you could see this information, just like I mentioned before, you are able to run Strapi in our console mode. So if you run yarn Strapi console, it will start Strapi in the interactive console mode. Then we are able to paste this command and you will see that will return all the routes associated with the user's permission plugin. You could explore the rest of the API, but just typing Strapi, clicking enter, and you'll see all the different methods and objects that are available to you inside our Strapi application. After we get our routes, let's reference our middleware via the UI ID that we have created. This is referencing our middleware that is found in the root of our folder inside our middlewares folder called user-find.manyjs. If you're ever wondering how to find the UUID for your middleware, inside the terminal, you could type yarn strappy middlewares colon list, which is going to return all the middlewares associated with your project. If we scroll up, we will find our global middleware, which is found in the root of the folder. And here we could see our UI ID. Now that we have our UI ID, next, let's find an index for the route we wanna update. We're gonna save it under find user variable. And what we're doing is we're searching through our routes and we're looking for the find 
route that has a method of get. Now we could console log our find user route by passing the index to our user routes function. So now let's take a look at the console log. After my application restarts, here you could see that we have successfully found our user find route and we have this config file and we wanna inject our middleware inside this configuration. So let's do that next. First, we're going to create a initialized route helper function. All this initialized route function does is gonna go ahead and check our routes at the index that we pass to see if it has a middleware's key or the policy's key. If it doesn't, we're gonna go ahead and initialize it with an empty array. Next, we're going to say, if we do find our find user index for a route, let's go ahead, initialize that route. And finally, let's go ahead and push our is user owner middleware to the configurations. So now when we console log the route, we will see that that route has been updated with our middleware being added to the configurations. So now if we try our request, we're still gonna see all the users because we didn't implement the logic, but we will see that we're now getting our console log from our custom middleware. So now inside our Strapi backend, so let's go into our user-find.many.js file and let's update our middleware with the code snippet from our blog post. So let's go ahead and copy the snippet and replace it in our code. And what we're doing here, we are first getting the current logged in user from the strappy state, and then we're checking. If there is no current user, we're just going to return a message with bad requests saying you're not authenticated. So if there's no current user logged in, we're just gonna say you're not authenticated and return an error message. But if you are logged in as a user, we are enforcing a filter to only return your user data. So let's take a look at it in action. In Insomnia, now if I refresh, we're only getting user information for that logged in user. Now that we know how to create custom middlewares and inject them into our user's permission plugin using our register function, you now have all the tools necessary to add any additional middleware that you need in the future. For instance, in our current application, we have our get single user request. At the moment, I'm able to request any user with any ID that I pass. Based on what you learned today, you could go ahead and implement find user one middleware that will only return the user information for the authenticated user. But for now in our application, under settings, users permissions, roles, authenticated in users permission plugin, I'm gonna go ahead and disable find one because it's not something we're using in our application. I'm gonna go ahead and save. And now when I make a request, I'm going to see a forbidden message locking down that request. Taking a look at our Shappy backend, we have two summaries that belong to our test user, and those are the two summaries that we see. And finally, for the last thing, if we take a look under accounts, for instance, if I update my name here and click update profile, this is gonna go ahead and change my profile. The issue here, even though I'm authenticated, this update, enables any user to update any other user's profile given that they have the ID. So taking a look under Insomnia, because I'm authenticated, I am able to update a user's first name to an empty string for any user. So if I go for user with ID of 11 and click update, notice I have updated that first name. If I do it for user with ID 12, I'm able to do it as well. So we need to lock down this functionality by creating a middleware that will check, are you the owner of the user data that you're trying to update and only allow users to update their own content. So let's take a look how we could do that next. Inside a Strapi application under middlewares, let's create a new file and we're going to call it user-canupdate.js. You could find the middleware 
code snippet inside of our blog post complementing this video. Go ahead and copy the code and let's paste it in. So let's take a look at this middleware. Here, the first thing we're doing is checking if the user is authenticated or logged in. If you're not logged in, we're just gonna return a message saying you're not authenticated. Next, we have access to our params and we're gonna check, are we passing the user ID in our params? Finally, if there is no user params, we're just gonna return a message saying, hey, you're missing the user ID that we need. And finally, we're going to check is the current user who's authenticated and the requested ID match. If they do not match, we're going to say, you're not authorized to perform this action. And finally, we are using Lodash to double check the body to make sure that you're only able to update the following fields, first name, last name, bio, and image. Now that we have our middleware complete, Let's go ahead into our index file and inside our register function, we're going to go ahead and inject this middleware into the appropriate route. First thing I'm gonna do is save the UI ID to a variable called is user can update middleware. Next, following the pattern, we're going to locate the index for the location of the user update route that we wanna update. We're basically searching for a handler uh, user.update with a method put. And finally, we're going to check if the update user route is found. Let's go ahead, initialize that route, and let's go ahead and check our newly created middleware called is user can update middleware. Now that this is done, making sure that application is running. So here I'm going to try to update the information for the other user. Since I'm logged in as a test user, I should not be able to do that. So let's give it a try. Hello and click send. Notice we're getting a message. You're not authorized to perform this message. So let's try to update the user information for user 11, which is actually the user with whom I'm logged in. So now when I say send, Notice that I'm successfully able to update my own information. So now on the front end, if someone tries to make a post request with a different user ID, they're not going to be able to update the user information unless they are the authenticated and authorized user. So in this video, we took a look how to use Strapi Middlewares to secure our application. You could read more about it in our documentation. As a quick review, we learned that we're able to add middlewares to our APIs. Any middleware that's added to our APIs, you are able to directly inject the middlewares via the routes. But if you wanted to create and inject middlewares to users permission plugin, we had to use our register function and do it programmatically. If you have any questions about any of these topics that we covered, Especially if you're new, it might seem a little bit confusing. You could always join us during Strapi Open Office Hours, Monday through Friday, 12.30 p.m. CST time. We would love to help you or just to hang out and chat. With that being said, in our next video, we're going to revisit our summary section where we're going to add a search box to be able to find our summaries, including the pagination. So see you in the next video.